Alright, welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls to Honcast here, Honcast on the weekday. We have Hon Tour Season 4 coverage. Of course, continuing to come at you on what is now the relegation matches. We have uh, completed the group stages that took place over the last week and a half, really two weeks here on Honcast coverage. Plenty of it, a lot of matches to be had, it was a lot of fun. But we now know how things are kind of shaping up and advancing forward. We know the four teams that, of course, are going to be in the bracket stage. Uh, but we also know the two teams that are in the relegation matches. And one of them is right here today. Now, real quickly, just a brief explanation of what these relegation matches are. Simply put, this is a chance to play for your lives here in Diamond. Uh, in the case of Revolution, at least. Revolution, they were a bottom two team as far as the group standings are concerned, so they have to fight to stay here in Diamond moving forward. The team they're doing it against is a team that actually finished top two in the gold division, that being Russian Dargons. Russian Dargons, we saw this team in the qualifiers. They came up just short in the qualifiers. They had to be gold as a result. But they competed all the way through, got to the grand finals from the winner's bracket. Thus, they are here as one of the two teams. Them and Mystery Gang, actually, are the two teams trying to vie for a spot in Diamond next cycle. So that's really what it all plays out to. The format this season definitely changing things up from the group stages, bringing in these relegation matches. We're having a lot of fun with it, to say the least. So excited to be here. Only one of these teams will be Diamond next cycle, and this is a best out of three series that's going to be coming at you. So now that all that is out of the way, the ex explanation and everything, we got some good heroes in New Earth, frankly, to, to watch here. So really excited for that. Uh, joining me today as a co-caster, actually been a little bit here since I've had him on, going to be joined by FJ here. FJ, how's it going? How's it going? Can you hear me all right? I can hear you fine. Perfect, perfect. Well, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Very excited to be here. It's been a while. So I'm, uh, I'm happy to go ahead and cast a bit of games with you again. Yeah. Yeah, looking for a co-caster today, and sure enough, you volunteered, and like, sure, let's bring on some FJ here for a for a good best of three coming at us. So, um, I, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to really watch uh, either of these teams too much, but especially Revolution, they've proven to be at least a very fun team uh, to watch here. But uh, you, you have any insight on that? You, you know these guys by chance, or? Um, I know some of the players from, uh, from matchmaking, pretty much, and I've seen a bit of their gaming. Um, but I'm really going to say that Hellborn side has a bit more... Um, star power to it. Like, there's a lot of players that I know on the Hellbone side. Yes. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen too much of the Legion side, but I can already say that the drafting is uh, quite interesting, seeing as we see the Nisus, Parasite, and Macrum is already here. Well, see, that, that's the funny thing. This isn't even, like, out of the box necessarily for this team. Uh, most noticeably, this team has done things from Myrmidon, in, like a Myrmidon Blitz lane. They've ran it several times, which has been funky. Uh, but they're also known for picking a carry. Uh, they, they like to go Shadow Blade as actually a carry choice. And Scurry actually plays it pretty damn well on top of that. So, yeah, they, they expect something funky here with this fourth and fifth pick. I'm pretty much going to guarantee it uh, with these guys. But as you're pointing out, too, I mean, already they got the Kinesis, Parasite, and Magmus uh, definitely aggressive style is what they're going for here but what do you think of the draft so far FJ? Well I can definitely tell you that Times Die has definitely done his research because he has, has banned the Ravenor and the Shadow Blade huh. so um, he knew what was up and he decided to go ahead and ban those two heroes uh, so far so good there's a lot of magic damage coming out on the Legion side and fair enough um, Team Dark, the Russian Dark Arns. I, I keep on calling them Don't Care because I, I know them from TMM called Don't Care, Don't yeah. Care. Yeah, and the Marax and Cthulhu fan are pretty good picks against uh, against some sort of magic of magic damage, and Rhapsody obviously a hero that can mitigate all of that damage. Mm -hmm. So, I, so far I'd say that the help on CS side is reacting pretty well to the the draft of the Legion side, but of course with Magnus, Kinesis, and Parasite, you are kind of saying that you want to win the laning phase, and you want to take take control of the mid game. Um, so let's see if they manage to do so. That will be the game plan, most certainly. Now, the fourth pick is uh, going to be coming out here. You, you figure that they're probably still need the support here, and then most likely their carry, of course, uh, when it comes down to it. Now, I'm sure Kinesis can be running the support, but I want to say they're going to be running it in more of an aggressive, perhaps even uh, suicide, I guess, is a possibility here for uh, to see Kinesis. And, you know, with Parasite 2, you never know if we're going to be seeing some aggressive jungle coming out. So it's always a, a question to be answered as well. In this case, a I think revolution. One of the, 
One of the cool things about Kinesis, though, if, is if, if you run Kinesis middle with a Parasite, you can kind of line up something for Parasite because you can pull them up in the air. Parasite would be in time for um, to follow up with the stun or a leech or whatnot. So um, you can definitely do anything. Like both Magnus and Kinesis are pretty comfortable as suiciders. Mm -hmm. There we go, Dark Lady. That's the carry of choice. You mentioned uh, pretty heavy carry bands in the second tier of bands, the Ravener, the Shadow Blade, of course, and then even finishing off with the Malakin. So taking away uh, some of those uh, those those options that are seem to be more of a niche, more of a flavor carry heroes for certain players. Perhaps Query definitely fits that, but he'll stick to what uh, what is a carry hero that's known just to be a very solid one at that. Uh, that, of course, the Dark Lady coming out here. So what do you think of Dark Lady here in this matchup? Is that it actually uh, something you like here, or are you unsure about it? Well, so far it's... I mean, the Dark Lady, Dark Lady Ultimate is pretty good against Rhapsody because Rhapsody, uh, like, because Dark Lady, the cover of Darkness, makes your opponent so uncoordinated. And if anything, it needs to be coordinated with the Rhapsody Ultimate. You need to land it wherever your teammates are, otherwise it won't really work properly. And with that Pebbles, of course, well, coordination is even more in point there. So I think Dark Lady, the Ultimate is pretty good, but I would actually have preferred to see Silhouette here. Simply put, because Moraxis and, and Cthulhuant and Rhapsody has really hard times controlling a silhouette. But a lot easier time controlling a melee, obviously. All right. So uh, they, they do go with the Dark Lady. Then you, see, you talked about the Pebbles response, too, though, coming out from Russian Dargons over here. So uh, they, they're they actually pretty melee heavy so far. That, the Cthulhuant, the Moraxis, a lot of beefier heroes. Uh, most certainly on their side. And, okay, so this is one of those funky picks that I was mentioning. I mean, it was just bound to happen. Now, Bass Extractor has actually played a, a Bramble several times here uh, for Revolution. So, again, it's not it, – the fact that we're seeing them pick it up, it's not too crazy. The fact that we're seeing it picked up in general, though, it's pretty damn crazy. I mean, Bramble is just a fun, different hero. What do you think of the Bramble pick up, Jay? I don't know. I, I gotta say that Bram was one of those heroes that was very popular on the tie scene where we saw the Haunt to a World Finals. I'm actually kind of surprised that it's gonna. It was such a long time since we actually started seeing it picked up. As, um, but luckily we see Revolution, um, kind of doing something different here, and I love to see that. That's that's so awesome to see. There we go with the silhouette pick, by the way. Speaking of which. Yeah, brought that up, and sure enough, uh, Russian Dargons actually uh, takes it themselves. So uh, it does end up in the hands of Bass Extractor, though, for for that Bramble. So again, now, I I don't know. I was going to say that there is a team that is known for running a, a roaming Bramble, even. I, I don't think actually Revolution w did that. It, back in the qualifiers, though, we saw a team actually do it a couple times with a roaming Bramble. Very interesting idea. But no, it's, it's I think it's going to be instead more of a uh, more of a laning Bramble here. As the Fizz Maestro is actually the support player, he's on the Kinesis, sure enough. So, you know, talking about that, how maybe expecting it to be more of a laning, farming Kinesis even instead. No, ends up in that support role. But, uh, yeah, that Silhouette final pick. Now, Bramble, uh, let's stick on him real quickly, though, because, again, Bramble, the idea, you mentioned in the tie scene, maybe you've seen it before, but um, the ensnaring shrubbery is actually a really solid ability, I feel like. And, and I feel like that's why these... This team especially maybe likes to pick it up. It, it's almost one of those abilities that, that'll that catch you off guard. Like you think you're going to be bursting somebody down, and all of a sudden they start healing back up or become a little tougher to kill. Um, is that something, I mean, do you agree that is that, is that an ability that may catch you off guard, that unaware? Well, very likely so, because ensnaring shoppery is not one that you... Like, people don't actually know how it works, really. It's, it's, it's uh, like, if you ask, I'd say, I'd say the majority of the Hauntcast viewers would not be uh, like completely aware of how the ensnaring shrubbery works exactly like what's the percentage and like how much does it actually heal and whatnot um i personally don't even know the numbers by exactly like by heart so <laughs> i'd say yes definitely catches you off guard and i'd say that when you when you see a hero like a, a team like machine dark gardens you would know that like you would know when the damage is coming because it's not like moraxis or Cthulhuan has any burst damage it's more about it's more about the pebbles having burst damage and the rest is kind of you can predict it so you, you would know when to enable the shrubbery mm -hmm. and when to start helping out your teammates and uh you said the kinesis was gonna go support but it looks like we have the bramble support here instead wait but it's gonna be a kinesis suicide what 
I could swear that Fizzmeister usually. Maybe I have that wrong, actually, then. I, I could have sworn with Cassie's guys before. He's more. But, you know, actually, at the same time, I feel like this is a team that maybe d kind of switches things uh, uh, quite a bit as far as well. Uh, Squirry is going to be their carry, and Pexu, yeah, he's been their jungler, definitely. But I have a feeling these other three players, they kind of just switch depending on who's playing what here. So, but yeah, just a main support Bramble coming out. Okay, now that's definitely throwing things for a loop right here. Um, I, he's going to be babysitting a dark lady. I mean, a melee babysitting a melee in the first place on paper just seems silly. And I don't know, man. And this, uh, well, what do you think of these lanes here, FJ, and how they, they're going to shape up? Well, you can compare it to pretty much any range in support, and you would say that it's very difficult to deal with the series like a tool fan, which is probably what they are expecting. Well, actually, never mind. They're expecting a jungling tool fan. But they are, we are going to be seeing a Pipples Rhapsody with a pseudo to the tri lane with a roaming tool fund who's going to be jungling with his boots so we can probably expect him to run around a lot in the bottom lane as well as trying to gank the middle mm -hmm. um, so i'd say that uh, bramble versus a rhapsody versus a plus tool fund that's going to be difficult really difficult <laughs> yeah but you know at the same time maybe maybe this is almost a blessing in disguise the fact that if it was Kinesis down here, you could argue that he would even be a, a easier target almost to go because of how squishy he could be, where Bramble I, ideally won't be putting himself in those dangerous spots because he knows he's already at an unfavorable position, being the melee especially. And But at the same time, he also is a little bit tankier, of course, than a Kinesis. So, so, you know, kind of think of it that way. You know, maybe this actually is for the better for the Legion side to an extent. But uh, they are going to avoid the tri-lane ultimately, the pseudo tri-lane even, as they do send Parasite. Uh, to the top side right here. So um, they're going to go an aggressive sort of dual lane, I guess you could call it. But I think this is more so Parasite probably just trying to avoid the Cthulhu fun, right? Well, yes, that and the fact that he can maybe try to get ganks off middle with the Magmas. Um It is a possibility. Kinesis can definitely deal with the Silhouette versus one versus one. So I'd say that I'd, I'd wanna fa I want to give the favor of the, the laning stage a little bit to Revolution, to be honest. It feels like they have a bit of take on it, and as long as we don't see any deaths on, on Dark Lady or Bramble, we should be pretty comfortable with the, with the lanes that, as they are set for Revolution Gaming. Yeah. But, um, Magmas versus Maraxxus, I'd give the edge to Magmas, because, simply put, because of the Volcanic Touch. And, um, yeah, I think it won't be long until we see Maraxxus having to pull himself some region or something similar, because that Volcanic Touch is just so damn powerful versus other melees. Top lane, look at the Skeleton King. Uh, Parasite getting a little <laughs> very aggressive, really. Kind of just runs right up to Silhouette right there. Now he's running back into the jungle, but he's going to find Cthulhu Fod, actually. Sure enough, roamed up here to say hello to Parasite. He has a trample up. He's not going to use it just yet. Uh, really not worth wasting the mana in his mind. Now he's going to go after Kinesis, kind of box him out. So really kind of playing as a babysit here for the Silhouette. And there's the trample, actually, followed by the Tree Grapple. In comes the Stasis Smash, trying to survive is Fizz Maestro. One more auto attack, though, the Tick Dot damage. No, he does a juke, though, into the trees. What a juking going on right here, actually. And the final auto attack is just not enough. As a tree, and Parasite is getting the Bloodless Kill onto Silhouette. Wow, what a turn. In favor of this Legion team, Kinesis is going to be fine with the health push. And the fact he bought the time to get the Bloodlust for his team and stayed alive in the end, that was pretty ridiculous by Fizz Maestro there. It's a beautiful juke. He missed it a little bit, but he actually made it work anyway. It was a very close call, and Cthulhuvan actually decided to go ahead and buy and use his mana pot to see if he could get enough mana for Trample. But it just wasn't quite enough, and very well done by Fizz Maestro getting out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Getting that first lot. That was absolutely huge, and that's got to be such a momentum booster as well for this Revolution team right here. You do see Pex, who's actually running the Cthulhu Vault once again, but <laughs> he's being chased down. He's going to quickly come out of the Minotaur, but now that Infest is on cooldown for quite a bit, but Cthulhu Vault, he's still he's only level 2 at the time being, so uh, he is going to be ultimately auto-attacked away and uh, has to... A little more, more defensively for the time being. But, uh, yeah, something else I want to talk about with Dark Lady as well. You know, being actually middle lane, they're going to go for the gang. Got a Maraxxus right here. Leech coming out on top of the auto attacks. One more needed. Can he get close enough? The bottle charge is being used. So that'll, that'll make several more auto attacks necessary, but the stun will do it in. And down goes Maraxxus right there. So, well played. And safe to say, Parasite, he's having a pretty big impact here so far in this game. 
Well, that's pretty much exactly what we were expecting when we were talking about the draft, that Parasite was going to be running around through top and through mid lane, and he surely made it work. Uh, getting those ganks off. Now he's actually bottom lane, and look at that. Rapsy could be in some trouble right here. Pebbles does have a start ready, so Rapsy should be fine. Let's see if Dark can come in and do something. No, he doesn't have boots yet, so. Yeah. No cow on the ice. <laughs> you have that expression in, in America? I have no clue what that means. I've never heard it before. No cow on the ice? I guess that's the Danish expression. <laughs> Is that what you just said? It, it means that there's, there's no danger. There's no danger. There's I'm, no danger. So when the cow's going to fall through the ice, I guess? It's yeah, yeah. You need, like, if, if there's a cow on the ice, that means that you have to save it immediately. Okay. Like, you need to guide the cow to, away from the ice, though it'll fall through. That's definitely not a, an American thing. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> Learn something every day, though. Fabelli, how about that? Look at the diving in between the towers right here. Picks up a kill on to Kinesis. Like, gets some revenge from earlier on. But, jeez, that's some aggressive play coming out from Fabelli to, to do the work. But uh, he also hits level 6 in the process, so he's making up after getting bloodlusted uh, earlier on in this game. As yeah, uh, Kinesis, that's arguably, well, definitely a weakness of his, of course. You catch up to him, it can be difficult for him to get away. Well, I can tell you this. Fabelli, I don't know if you've actually, like, know much about him, but he's, like, he's known as the best player of Greece. <laughs> and he is, uh, he is a brother to Fibunku who was also a, a huge player. I don't actually know what he's what he's up to these days. By the way, look at middle lane. Could be dangerous for Magmus, but no. Oh, he's going to juke the racks. Jeez, he has to juke another one. And no, he's not going to, though. Catlamine finishes him off. Well played there. Good pursuit. It was a great attempt from Magmus, but obviously it was a very difficult task at the same time. Bottom Meanwhile, lane. top lane, Kinesis up all action all over the place. There's kills at the bottom lane. You see Kinesis going down. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, what happened down here? It looks like Bramble gets picked off in exchange for the Rhapsody. So all three lanes picking up on some action right there. And uh, as a result, we have a 4-3 hero killer for the Hellborn team. But it seems like the Hellborn side coming out on top a little bit better of the, all those exchanges there. As I say that, though, they're pissed off. They want to take out this Pebbles. In comes the flanking Skeleton King. The Stalagmites put the nice Lava Surge right before they were placed onto him. And it will catch Pebbles to secure the kill and finish it off right there. So that's a big kill, pretty necessary one. It did take four heroes, though, but still. That's well, the more the merrier, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, to speak of Fibeli once again, um, Fibeli was actually known as the Greece, like the, the Greek god. He was like, he was top of the ladder um, before the compression. Well, actually before the previous compression, I believe. I don't even know. Like, it feels like it's, it's a long time ago, but I believe it's only a year ago or so, Fibeli was like the best player of the ladder and you would always fear him. Mm -hmm. And uh, here he is back in action once again, and it's been a while since I've seen him in this kind of action. Look at top lane, by the way, Fibeli picks up yet another kill. That, that guy is crazy, like you, you definitely want to fear him. He's uh, he's one of the big players on the scene, or has been at least, yeah. and very sad to see him back in action. Yeah, no, he's he's definitely a name that we know in, in I in I we first heard about him because of, yes, his success in the TMM, how he's high in the ladder. And, and then he, he was in this scene, and obviously he, he did pretty well as far as stat line went in the beginning of earlier Haunter seasons. And he kind of kind of became a name. And, and he was always been a player that's kind of been around, but never necessarily on the top, top tier team. He's definitely played amongst the diamond level teams on uh, in the competition. But, again, has never really been on that true top team. I want to say we've even seen him at a dream hack, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, to be honest. But anyways, meanwhile, action at the bottom lane, though, going on. Bramble big sport breath right there. It stuns all three. They get the one kill on a Rhapsody, make it two on a Pebbles. And now Cthulhu Fun has to somehow get out of here. I don't know if that's happening, though. Even though as tanky as he is, he does not have a trample up. He's going to fall. A hat trick for the team of Revolution as they collapse completely here at the bottom lane to secure all three kills for the five of them. So that was a huge, huge moment to boost for them. But at the same time, Silhouette is farming away, man, at the top lane. That's, See, that's the thing. Show. Like, Silhouette cannot fight until she has an Nullstone. Like, Silhouette is a terrible team fighter until she has Nullstone slash even PK in some cases. And the same goes for Pebbles. So, whatever happens for Russian Dragons right now, they need to try to avoid team fighting. And they need to do that at all costs. They need to wait for Silhouette to get his Nullstone. They need to get a PK on the Pebbles, possibly even on the Maraxes. And uh, just lean back, chill, avoid team fighting by all means, because the Legion side has way stronger team fights at the moment. And um, 
well. So right now, create space for the pebbles and silhouette to farm, and you can do that by placing aggressive wards, and you can do that by pushing out lanes. That's how you create space for pebbles or silhouette, mm -hmm. uh, so they can get back into shape. What's happening right now is that they're gathering three, play three people at bottom lane, trying to avoid the first tower from falling while silhouette is farming, and so is Moraxes. It's not optimal because pebbles is not farming as much as you could, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty good way to react to the situation. Yeah, obviously they had to. They have to accept something in the end, and, and it's simply that uh, maybe Pebbles is going to have a little bit more of a difficult time. And you, you could question that a little bit. That yeah, Pebbles, the hero. It's he's healed about that snowball, right? He's kind of the the definition of that. That's actually bottom lane. They're going to go on a dark lane right here. The trample to start a staccato stuff. But you see that in snaring shrubbery. It seemed like he took little damage. Well, that's a lot because of that. The fine wall in the meantime, not the perfect block, but it might not be necessary as Parasite comes in to clean up the trample completely whiffed as well. Cthulhu fought definitely regretting that decision. It backfires. He goes down. The mass control burst from Kinesis assisting, and now it's Pebbles, and it's his turn. The snaring shrubbery applied to. Parasite help with the slow. Down goes Pebbles. It's just a snowball effect as Silhouette ports in. And that's going to prove to be a poor decision, most likely. The Steam Bath. He's just out of range. Silhouette now oh, is going to be killed in the end with the Lava Surge. A double tap for SDSD. Bramble is going to try to run on out of here. He may just have to be the sacrificial lamb in the end. It looks like it. He goes down. It's not over just yet, actually. Magnus is kind of still hanging around, but maybe he's going to be fine when it's all said and done. But. Boy, it just kept going as, well, Russian Dargons, it seemed like they just kept porting in and Silhouette got to finish it off there at the poor timing. Right here, I'm, I'm literally sitting here face palming because I was like, I was just saying avoid team fighting for, at all cost. And they take a team fight, three versus an unknown amount of players, and they get overwhelmed. And then they continue the team fight. Uh, and just get completely annihilated. Uh, yeah, that put them behind yeah. quite a bit, to say the least. I mean, and it is creating space for and time for the Dark Lady. That's the thing. Well. Silhouette is still on top of the GPM chair, but it, obviously the gap has closed a little bit here at least. Now, this actually was a good point that was being brought up uh, with this Silhouette final pick, by the way, where Dark Lady is considered pretty good against the silhouette you know the fact that with those dark blades kind of screws her from trying to swap out with the illusion especially and do you think that almost is a mistake that they went silhouette into a dark lady or is it is is it still like there's still value there and it makes sense still i don't know like the, the hero is fine like there's no issues there uh you can also wait away from from her co of darkness you obviously cannot deal with the silence but you're not really supposed to get close to the dark lady in any event um so it is one of those distance Distance damage dealers, so you want to be, you don't want to necessarily go for the Dark Lady unless you you know that you can kill her. So when you're playing so that you want to try to go for for the squishier, squishy heroes in team fights. Obviously there are very few squishy heroes in, in on the digit side, but all of them has some sort of shield or defensive mechanism, mm -hmm. get away. So it's gonna it, it's a difficult spot to place the right in, but then again. You, they have a lot of chase power going on in the leap inside, and so that excels when it comes to avoiding chases. Yeah. By the way, look at Maraxes there in the middle lane, or he will get away. Yeah, that was close, but uh, in the end, he's able to walk on out of there with that Matrix, as he tends to do from time to time. Kinesis is going to be boxed out from the regen room. Good job by Rhapsody, ultimately helping to protect it. Former axis right there, but man, this stat I got to point out is actually fine wall bottom tower easily helps kill it. That's definitely one of the powerful uses of that Bramble ultimate for sure. Um, but look at the style on a Pexu man here on this parasite 4 0 oh, 7. I, I gotta say that th this guy seems like uh, we've seen him on parasite several times now here at Honkast casting matches at least, and it seems like he's always just done a damn good job of, of being useful and being making kills happen. So. Uh, he's been involved in 11 of the 12 total hero kills here for the Legion side. So very worth pointing out there, I think, his success. Yeah, he's, done a, he's done a great job of uh, being at the right place at the right times. And uh, that's what that's exactly what a Parasite player needs to do. It's not, it's not really about being good at farming or being like particularly good at, at like doing crazy stuff with your hero. It's about being at the right pl places at the right time. Um, that's what a Parasite player should be doing, should be focusing on. And Pexter can do that. Seems to be very confident in that area. 
So he's, uh, again, doing a good job there. I, again, I will say, though, despite the 12-6 to 6 hero kill lead, hell, Dark Lady even, 2-0-7. <laughs> you would think with a stat line like that, this hero would be taking off right now. Not, not really. Only 360 gold per minute. Nothing too spectacular here. In fact, she's still trying to finish that rune cleaver as we are coming up to the 14-minute mark. So uh, the overall farm continues to be once again in favor of Favelli right here. He's going to be found by the puzzle box minions. Wow, he's getting low, actually. That was almost a dangerous spot, but in the end, he is going to be fine as he walks away with that tree grapple. Uh, but he is farming 430 gold per minute. The Knoll Stone is actually just about finished here. As he's heading back to base, uh, needs really 50 more gold. May sell one of the minor totems to help get him there, perhaps. But he's going to basically have it now, and then, of course, the portal key will be next in line to follow it up. And as you're saying, that's, that's when he can at least start getting a little interested in doing some fighting here in this game. But until then, ideally you want to stay out of it. <laughs> As we saw earlier. Portal Key, by the way, picked up a Moraxis. Pebbles is coming along 1500 gold. Magmus, the immediate response though. He also gets a Portal Key. So, pretty good timing for both sides there. Let's see how it comes into use. Yep, now we just need the PK on Fibeli and we're pretty good to go. And, uh, actually look at, look at Zulfan. He doesn't really have any items. He just has to play the Greaves and the bottle. You would expect him to get a Mystic Vestment as well, uh, on top of that, uh, with those, that goal. But I guess he, does he want to get a PK as well? I, I really hope not. Yeah. Both PK on the same team? <laughs> it would be a ways away, that's for sure. And yeah, right now he's not necessarily getting priority farm, is safe to say. So yeah, I think maybe putting a emphasis on getting more of the build-up items, like you mentioned, the Mystic Vestment, special things like that, might make a little more sense. but. He is currently at just about a thousand gold. Actually, he is the one farming this pushed-up creepway bottom lane. So he, I guess he kind of is getting some priority farm here for the Hellborn team, which is a little bit curious to be honest. But that's uh, what's going on at least. The puzzle box—it's got to be level two now. Okay, level two here. On to Parasite, by the way. So more good news coming out. Magmus. Okay, he had the portal key on the ground, but it picks it back up and. He's, uh, he's playing uh, the game of I actually don't have it, when really he does, so. Yeah, you look at Calamite, <laughs> he's doing the he's same. He's doing the same. Uh, they're both trying to trick one another, yet they both actually have their portal key. That's pretty funny, actually. Again, it can't be destroyed anymore. Or else that would be really awkward right there. <laughs> Creepwave just walks up and kills it, but no. He's going to be able to pick it up here when he feels it necessary. Putting it in a spot to where if like somebody does appear, he's going to be able to just pick it up real quickly and then go for the jump. That's a pretty clever idea. I mean, so that's to sell, sell his Lagos action. There we go. He actually gets initiated upon. Oh, the protective uh, body. Oh my god, he just got a range at the last second. Can he in the background? Jason Smash throws in some creeps. However, Magnus is going to fall. They get the kill to Moraxis, though. A one for one. You see Trigger Apple from Silhouette kind of interested in making a play, but... Not worth going for the dive right there. So the portal key eventually does come out from Magmus in this case. In the end, though, it's a well, a one for one. The two heroes. And yeah, then the, again, there was a lot of TPs used for both sides. So it did steal the farm a little bit. True. But now going for triple stack ancients right here. Um, so I'll put him in a slight lead, but of course, Dark really has the same. Uh, there's triple stack ancients for the Legion side as well. It feels like this game is like pretty much anyone's, anyone's game to win right now. Seems so even uh, in all terms. Both guys dealing with triple stacks and both teams. And the gold deficit and XP deficit is pretty much non existent after 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. And 2k gold is not a lot at this point. No, yeah, this is definitely a very even game for sure. Cthulhu Font, by the way, he does actually get the portal key. So <laughs> you're talking about that. And sure enough, he actually ends up going it. Do you actually find that to be an issue? The fact that he did kind of make priority to get it here, and they're lesser supportive items, perhaps, as a result. Well, well you got to say, pretty much, th there's going to be four heroes who have the ability to initiate on Dark Lady, and Dark Lady is the hero you want to keep down. As long as Dark Lady is being held under control in these team fights, then I don't really think that Russian Dark Guns has any how on the ice. I feel like they're, they'll be doing good. Um, I mean, Silhouette is, is, has way easier access to kills late game than Dark Lady actually will have, um, simply because, because there's so many portal keys, so many stuns, 
um, on the help on side who can uh, initiate stuns. And look at that, there's actually team fights in the middle. As we see that, but man, that ensnaring shrubbery, I'm pretty sure doing a lot of mitigation there. Down goes Pebbles. Good to the fuck, gonna be picked off. Morax is coming down for the Stasis Smash, not gonna survive much longer despite that Matrax. Another hat trick for the team of Revolution, and they're gonna keep going. In fact, Silhouette, however, is gonna get the damage done on a Magmas to take him out as he thought he had a chance to make another play right there. So well played by Fabelli. But this tower is most certainly going to be taken out. Although Silhouette, and so one of these is the real one. He swaps back in. Fabelli's trying to make a stand right here. Wraps going to be picked up in the background. Fabelli is also going to fall. That was such a risky play. However, the Illusions are going to finish off Dark Lady in the end. So, I, I mean, I guess it ended up getting a Dark Lady killed. But, man, he just gave them a genocide and died on top of that. So I don't think it's worth it there, safe to say. No, definitely not. Um, that team fight was definitely won um, by the Legion. You know, that, uh, surviving with two, three players, as well as getting the tower. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, it, ju it just comes to show that the team fights are just stronger for the Legion side so far, unless the help on side gets the initiate off. Um, but even with four PKs, it seems like Magnus is doing a great, great job getting those initiates off. And it actually initiating with the ultimate as well. Um, oh, actually, it did. Never mind. We just initiated with a great stun. Followed up with a cover of, da cover of darkness. And, well, with the cover of darkness and the entangling vine wall, you cannot expect your teammates to help you, nor can you expect to escape from the entangling vine wall. So it's actually a pretty good combination in that regards. That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not something you think about, obviously, Bramble, and not a hero we have often by any means. But, yeah, some good uh, pressure, some good lockdown there, similar to like an empath, of course. With the wall ability. I want to say his wall is even a little longer, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not exactly sure of the length of it is, but feels like it might be a little bit longer, so. Like the empath there. We actually did see them uh, do a behemoth bramble before, too, and <laughs> that's pretty fun to watch. This fissure's turning into a bramble wall. It's like good luck hmm. getting out of that, so. Well, the quad portal key is official here on the Hellborn side. Obviously, you look across the board. It's uh, four to the five heroes. Of course, Rhapsody, the only one not with one. And, hell, maybe by the late game, if it comes to that, she very likely could have one. It's not out of the question, but very mobile team here amongst them. But I think they want more damage on Silhouette now. Probably a good decision. Yeah, I guess they're probably going to see a Geominus Bane coming out of him at some point. Yeah, I would guess so. Diamond's Bane would be a good choice here. And then followed up by Strong and Head into Wingbow, I guess. That would work. What about Dark Lady? Uh, she's uh, got the Abyssal Skull on. She's got her front. Does she go more of a Shrunk and Headier, you think? Or will it be like a Firebrand, a little more aggressive playstyle? Uh, I would go Shrunk and Head here. Um, but I could imagine seeing a, seeing a, like a Frostman pick up first. But I would, I would personally do Shrunk and Head first. Seeing as it would allow, allow him to jump into team fights and wreck havoc, um, he, it's very easy to counter initiate on Dark Lady who doesn't have a strong head. And with four PKs, it makes it so much easier. And as we mentioned, as we pointed out earlier, Dark Lady is the core of this lineup. I mean, in in late game, Dark Lady is uh, what needs to have five, of course. Magnus and Ramble Parasite hardly does a big difference when it comes to late game, and. By the looks of it, I think Russian Dargans wants to avoid Dude, going uh, going for any more team fights at this very moment because, because right now they're counter pushing, and I think that's uh, that's a pretty good decision. Yeah, you see the split pushing going on right here. I mean, the lead is growing a little bit here for Revolution, 4,500 gold lead, 8,400 experience lead right now. As the Invis Moraxis is trying to scout things out here, there is no ward of revs, just ward of sites all around. Very aggressive ward of sites. Jeez, three ward of sites in the Hellborn jungle right here, all in a similar area. Uh, Kinesis, or Moraxis, though, he's really getting some good information for his team and setting up as if they may want to defend this right here. We'll see if they actually go for it or not. I mean, the tower still has plenty of life left. You got Silhouette, she's... Not here herself, but of course has that TP. If a fight does break out, her ultimate is ready to go as well. 
Dark Lady just using her charging sparks right there. That's going to be the cue. Here we go. The follow up with the trample by the Asnarian Strawberry comes out in the background. Pebbles going to be caught by the face like a parasite. The vine wall's down, and Cthulhu Font is going to end up falling. Silhouette. Not much she's going to be able to do. She's trying to live this whole time. That's not going to happen as she goes down right after she poured it in pretty much. And Moraxis also going to be killed off. They get the tower kill. A hell of a fight for Revolution. And that's a fight that's going to really start putting them ahead right now. And into the base yeah, we I go. Don't, yeah, I don't even know. Um, Dude, the I don't even know what to say. It, feel, it feels like it's been wrong team fight after wrong team fight for Russian Targaryens, and right now they're paying for it. Um, racks are going down. Nothing they can do to stop it. Fibeli actually does have a buyback ready. Size not to go ahead and use it. So you guess when Raxus didn't have one, they just let go of the barracks. I mean, the game is still to. It's the game is still possible to win, of course, by by any means. Up on side, um, but they need to stop taking such bad team fights, and and that's pretty much all it is. It is terribly executed team fights, and it's two players going into four or five players, and then while the rest of the help on side is not behind the two players going in front. I mean, we've seen it a couple of times this game, and uh, well, they need to stop doing that, obviously. Yeah, because the draft is fine. Like the, the draft is fine. The, the gold was fine. Uh, right now, it's not looking so sharp anymore, but gold levels were fine before. Yeah. We need to pray for big plays from the belly and the Q-Zain, the Pebbles. Well, they're trying for one right here. You see the massive build, right? the whole team coming in. They may find Kinesis at least, and that will actually happen. So they uh, they get something out of it right there. That's the beginning of what they need. But of course, I mean, you still look at the golden experience gap right here. It's obviously pretty massive at this time. Kinesis, by the way, he was really struggling for a lot of this earlier game, but it's definitely picked it up. He's got a tablet, another 2,400 gold actually saved up. Wonder what his intentions are for going for a next item in his case. But obviously, the scariest thing is you have a dark that he has middle lane Magnus jumping in. Not going to be much though. Uh, Dark Lady is really farmed right now. 534 gold per minute, only going to get better. I got to say, too, the ensnaring shrubbery, it's as expected almost. It, it, Bass Extractor, again, he's played this year before, he's comfortable with it. He seems like he's really on top. As soon as somebody gets jumped, that ensnaring shrubbery goes up. And they take a lot less damage. You can definitely tell it having an impact uh, when it does happen. And you also see the, the Astrolabe that he went from earlier, and now the, the portal key he has. So... This is a main support Bramble, I have to remind myself, even, <laughs> that we're seeing here. Yet, uh, he's managed some, obviously, very strong farm himself, what he's put together. So, the Bramble pick proving to work here. Kind of a counter to the burst. I love it. It's, it's, uh, it's awesome to see, and um, draft from Revolution is very damn powerful. It's definitely showing its worth right now. Um... It's a draft that would have issues against top tier teams, like such as, say, BMG or Sig Esports. But it looks like Russian Dragons haven't really figured out how to deal with it just yet. So you got to be careful. And there we go. Morasis gets initiated upon. And yep. did Fan manage to do anything about this? No. <laughs> That was funky, actually, with Cthulhu, like almost like trampled through the final wall right there. But Rhapsody in the meantime going to be picked off, trying to use Protective Melody. She goes down, and so does Cthulhu find the illusion of Silhouette going to be killed off right there. Jumping back in as a little bit of overextension here from Revolution, or maybe not. Mass Control comes out, and Kinesis just kind of leans them up. Somehow picks you got the hat trick after it all on the Parasite, but that's going to do it. GG, well played. Game one will go to Revolution. And again, guys, these are best of threes, remember, here. For obviously, uh, with, with, a, with a lot on the line, you win this, you, you got you, your diamond cycle, too. You lose this, your gold cycle, too. And how about that, that stat line for Pex? I don't know. That just kept standing out to me, though. 9-0-14 oh, on a Parasite, nearly 500 gold per minute. Boy, would it be nice to have a Parasite with a stat line like that every game. <laughs> Says every time that's, ever. that's beautifully executed by Pex, definitely. And a wonderful draft coming up on Scurry, and I gotta say, even better captaining. It it felt like throughout the entire game, Revolution had the upper hand when it came to it, when it comes to team fights, and they knew exactly what to do pretty much at any point. Like they knew they knew when to take team fights, they knew when to react to team fights. They kind of had an idea of when Russian targets would initiate upon them, and they reacted properly to those initiates. Mm -hmm. 
um, upper hand coming out from Squarey throughout the entire game. Um, he was definitely, it felt like he was, um, his team was more on point and had more experience playing together. At least that's what it seemed in this game. Yeah. That was, uh, def as usual, this is the thing. This is why I'm so torn. And, you know, in the end, may the best team win, of course. But it's a lot of these newer teams that, that are coming out of the scene, Revolution's definitely one of these teams, obviously, too. And, and they, they're, they're just they're so fun to watch with, with, the, with the ideas, the heroes they pick. And, and then that's the great thing, too. Not only do they pick funky heroes, but most of the time, at least, it works. I do remember, you know, here I was amping up these guys. And I think it was a matchup against uh, BMG, if I'm not mistaken, or some, some one of the more top tier teams, obviously, in the group stages. And they ended up picking a Flint Beastwood as well as uh, another crazy pickup. And it was just like, okay, this is maybe a little over the top. And it, and it just completely failed. But hey, they're, they're, not, they're not willing to, to, you know, back down. And, you know, they're willing to try even is the idea there too. So, um, but uh, yeah, impressive performance indeed. And right now they got the one nothing lead. So Russian Dargons going to have to go back to the drawing boards here and Figure out how to deal with uh, the drafting, especially of Revolution, and uh, what they want. They will be on the Legion here in game number two. So, ladies and gentlemen, going to be going on a short break. We'll stay tuned, though. we got game number two coming up next here. The relegation matches have begun. One of two.